everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Marvel Legends 6 inch Spider Man Homecoming Vulture figure from Hasbro. Now, this figure comes packaged in the same style packaging we see with all the Marvel Legends. You've got the Legends series logo up at the top, the Spider Man Homecoming movie logo down below the figure's name, and the figure's clearly displayed in the window box. On the very top of the packaging, we have that spider symbol, that movie spider symbol, and then on the sides of the packaging, we have images of Spider-Man. This seems to be the same image used on all the movie figures in this wave. And then on the back of the packaging, we have a look at the actual figure, a brief bio in multiple languages, and then down below, a look at all the figures in the wave that you need to get in order to complete the vulture's wings. All right, let's get this figure open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging along with the other contents. Now, if you're wondering why I'm reviewing the Vulture now as opposed to not last in the wave with the wings, it's because I don't have the entire wave in, in my possession at this time. I've only got the two figures I've already previously reviewed in this one. So once I have all the figures, once I've got my hands on the rest of the figures in this wave, then I'll come back and do another review with the wings and everything. But I want to go on and show you the Vulture figure itself since I do have that figure currently in hand. So the figure comes with the main back piece for the wings. This works kind of like a backpack. You've got this little peg here and you plug it into the figure's back. And pretty nice paint detail on this. You've got the lighter green, and then you've got this kind of neon blue down here, and then also some purple. So I like the added color, and then you've got dark gray here. And then again, you just kind of uh, plug it into the figure's back, and it works like a backpack. Now once you have all the figures in this wave, then you would assemble the wings. So I have two of the pieces, so I can show you how this works a little bit. Basically, you would snap this larger piece on first, down here on the bottom. It just snaps into place, and then fold it down like that. And then you would take the turbine piece and snap it in up top here. And it, again, just snaps into place. And then you just fold the wings so they come together and form essentially one piece. Now you can have, you know, you can do this and it's got the little uh, turbine propeller that you can rotate and this actually also moves inside there. So you can pose it in different ways. And then the third piece of the wing would attach here at the end and fully extend out and then you would do the same thing on the other side. Now the other thing this figure includes is a figure stand for your wings because once you have all the wing put together, it's going to make your figure pretty top heavy. So they've included this extra stand. And so what you would do is you just kind of put it behind your figure and it helps support the wing so that the figure doesn't fall over. Okay, so for the figure itself, I think they've done a nice job overall with the sculpting detail on it. Looks pretty true to how the character appears in the movie. The one downside to this figure is if you don't have all the other figures in the wave, there's not a whole lot you can do with this figure since you don't have his wings. I think one of the things they could have done to add to the playability of this figure itself is included an unhelmeted head, a Michael Keaton head, so you could have that more kind of casual look that you see in the movie when he's not wearing the vulture armor. You still have the vulture feet on the figure, but still I think if they had given us an unhelmeted head that would have been cool. Also, I, kind of, I like the idea of doing a build a thing as opposed to just a build a figure, but I think it would have been better if they had stuck with something that wasn't related to a specific figure in the wave. Because again, if you don't have all the other figures in the wave, this figure comes, you know, kind of pointless. But as I said, I do like the sculpting detail with the helmet. I think they've done a nice job. You've got the neon green. I like the visor that goes over the eyes. And then you've got this metallic bronze color here on the front. You've got the little oxygen hoses that go off to the side. Again, you've got that metallic color on the top of the helmet. You do have a little bit of marbleization going on on the top of the helmet, but it doesn't stand out too bad. And then you've got this lighter army green color on the sides, which look pretty good. I like the jacket. I like the sculpting detail with this collar, this fur collar he's got on the jacket. It's done with a beige color with a little bit of wash effect. And you can see his black shirt underneath the coat. And it looks like there's a little gold circle on his shirt in there. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Maybe a rank insignia or something. I don't know. And then he's got the gold zipper and the gold buckles with the harness, which look pretty good. The jacket's done with a dark brown color to look like a leather jacket. You've got some sculpting detail on that with the lines and stuff. So it kind of looks like a leather jacket. So I like that. 
And then on the back, you've got this harness piece that that's you know armor, and again, it's done with that kind of bronze color. And then on the sides here, you've got a little bit lighter bronze color, so I like that. And then you can see his pants underneath the armor pieces, which are green, army green. And then he's got the armored leg pieces and the vulture-looking feet, which I'm sure have a purpose for the actual armor. I'm sure it's not supposed to really look be for vulture feet, but that's what it ends up looking like, which is probably why they call him the vulture. But I'm sure they give a practical reason for having these weird-looking armored feet. Now, I don't know if the wings actually fold up into this main piece in the movie at any time, but you can display the figure with just the back piece. It looks kind of like he's wearing a, a, you know, a backpack or something. And I could see like how the wings would extend out from this when he wants to fly. So this figure stands just under six and three quarter inches tall. Here's a comparison with the Homecoming Spider-Man and the homemade suit figure. And I think the scale between these two is pretty good. Here's a comparison with the Captain America Civil War Spider-Man figure that came in the box set. And then finally, here's a comparison with the Captain America Civil War Iron Man figure. So for articulation, you can turn the head to the left and to the right. It's on a ball hinge joint, so he can look down pretty good. And then he can look up pretty good for flight poses, which is nice. You can also pivot the head to the left and the right a bit. Arms attached with your standard ball hinge joint at the shoulder, so you can get his arm out good. He's got good rotation. He's got a bicep swivel. He's got a double hinged elbow, so good bending there at the elbow. He's got swivels at the wrist, hinges on the hand, so good up and down movement with the hands. He's got an ab crunch joint, so he can uh, crunch down about that much. And then he can look back about that much and get that clicky noise with that joint. He's got a waist swivel. Legs are attached with ball joints. He can do the splits about that much. You can get the leg forward pretty good, and you can do the leg out and back. He's got a thigh swivel, double hinged knee, so he can bend his knee about that much, and then hinges on the feet, so up and down movement, and he does have ankle pivot, and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Okay, so that's my review. So overall, I like this figure. I like the sculpting detail on it. I think it looks pretty true to how the character appears in the movie. I like the sculpting detail on the helmet, and the paint applications are pretty solid, and it's got good articulation. The only downside to this figure is that unless you get all the figures in the wave, you don't have the wings and therefore there's not much you can do with it. So I really wouldn't recommend this figure unless you plan on buying all the figures in the wave so you can complete the wings. It would have been nice if we'd gotten an unhelmeted head with this one. That would have definitely, I think, added to the playability of this figure. Now this figure along with the rest of the wave has started to hit places like Amazon.com. That's where I got my figure from and you should start seeing it at more places on May 1st which is the end of this week and then places like Big Bad Toy Store should have it up for pre-order and possibly in stock on June 1st. We'll have a full image gallery up at MarvelousNews.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Also, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I'll have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, I'll catch you later.